Hi folks, this is the audio that I recorded of a presentation I gave at New Orleans, Louisiana on the 26th of June 2006 at the annual convention um, of ALA. Um, I began with of course thanks and welcome and, and all of that stuff and, um, and then I began to talk about Barry Lopez and an excerpt from one of his books called Crow and Weasel that I was very taken with and I didn't record this so I'm just adding it on at the front here and then I'll pick up in the actual audio. Barry Lopez writes, the stories people tell have a way of taking care of them. If stories come to you, care for them and learn to give them away where they are needed. Sometimes a person needs a story more than food to stay alive. That is why we put these stories in each other's memory. This is how people care for themselves. And one day you will be good storytellers. Story Never forget these obligations. I need to talk for just a minute about the power of the story. First, my story. Ten years ago, I was 32 years old, and I had just been accepted into the Graduate School of Library and Information Services at the University of Denver. Can you remember the very first time you thought of yourself as a librarian? It's hard. Sometimes it's, you know, I've always been a librarian. Well, that was the first time I did, and I was so thrilled. Each and every librarian I met gave me goosebumps. Librarians, <laughs> the Gov Docs librarians. <laughs> oh my God! I just love saying Gov Docs. <laughs> the poetic language of the lone cataloger. <laughs> I found out there's such a thing as a medical librarian and map cataloging. You are all so smart, and so funny, and such generous human beings, and I was going to get to be one! <laughs> it was a whole world, fascinating and complex. I immediately felt sorry for anyone who wasn't a librarian. <laughs> How odd, then, when I realized that everyone else is sorry for us. <laughs> This fact made me feel a little puzzled, and then indignant, followed by outrage, <laughs> and back to puzzled. Someone had to do, I don't know, something about our crummy reputation in society, and don't even get me started on pay equity. <laughs> it was at that precise moment in my life that I saw two films in the same four-week period. The first one was called The Celluloid Closet, a documentary picture about the images of gay and lesbian people in film throughout history using film clips. And the other one was Party Girl. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Okay, I do this every time I make a presentation. Hands up if you've never seen the movie Party Girl. It. You must see Party Girl. I mean, the minute you get home, you have to rent it or buy it. You can get it at Blockbuster. You might even have it in your collection. I don't know, but you'll buy it after this. <laughs> it's about how a young woman gets in touch with her inner library, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> no, I'll say one other thing. There are three of the best lines of any librarian role in American cinema. Number one. I assume you're familiar with the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> darling, a librarian is a professional with a master's degree in library science. <laughs> and number three, and possibly my favorite, he's not a dick, he's a patron. <laughs> I was 
going to library school, I saw a great documentary using film clips in examining issues in our society, and I saw a movie that really talks to, about librarians. And that was the lightning in my particular bottle. And thus was born the idea for the Hollywood Librarian. I'm going to show you about 35 minutes of the footage in just a second. But I have just a moment more to talk about the power of the story, if you don't mind. When I started out with my youthful outrage, tilting at windmills and thinking about stereotypes, it was clear to me that if people only knew how smart and funny we really are, our problems would be over, right? It's the stereotype that's tripping us up, isn't it? And the hateful, lazy entertainment and advertising industries that perpetuate it, right? Can a stereotype be that powerful, I thought, for 10 years? And if so, how can a computer programmer go from nerd, frat boy stooge, to uber cool in a single generation? Then I thought, could misogyny and sexism then explain the longevity of this repugnant stereotype? I went down that path for a long time and I've learned many important truths about the feminized professions and feminist theory, which I have yet to exhaust. And yes, misogyny and patriarchy have a lot to answer for, but I still wasn't satisfied. Onward. I discovered that many of us think, not at all unreasonably, that if maybe we just do our jobs better, if we became indispensable, then we will naturally be rewarded with respect and security. But I came to a, th I was thwarted, this time by what I call the librarian paradox, which goes like this. The better we do our jobs, the less respect we get. Why? Because the better we do our jobs, the more invisible we are. The better the signage, the more intuitive the user interface, the more comfortable the reading room rooms, the broader the resources, the more invisible we become. And all the love goes where? To our buildings. People say all the time, oh, I love my library. And she's nice, yeah, she's great. Yeah, what's her name? <laughs> Poor thing, she's always there. <laughs> People feel sorry for her. And I know it's not that we don't work hard enough or that our work isn't good enough. So if it's not the stereotype or sexism entirely or the quality of our, our work, what is it? About a month ago, I was turned down for a grant from the National Endowment for Humanities to finish this film. And last Monday, I got the reviewer notes. One of them said, and I quote, although it is unquestionable that the documents safeguarded and preserved in libraries have unending value to the humanities, I am not convinced that an exploration of librarians themselves offers a strong humanities angle. <laughs> I am so not picking a fight with this reviewer at all. As a matter of fact, I'm actually quite grateful for that comment because I finally got it. I got it that people think libraries just happen, and that librarians are freaks for books. We're kinky for details. I got it that we create such great systems for getting at the good stuff, that people can believe in the library fairy. the cobbler's elves who come in at night and do everything, and that all we have to do is switch on the lights and act bitchy. <laughs> yes, people think that our strength is in finding information, but they don't know that's because we put it there in the first place. <laughs> people don't know that we've been doing this for thousands of years. People think we're security guards with a master's degree. 
They don't know that a library without a librarian is like a radio without batteries. And why don't they know? Maybe we forgot to tell them our story. What did Badger say? The stories people tell have a way of taking care of them, he said. Learn to give them away where they are needed, he said. It's time to give our way, away our story because, my God, it's needed. And what is our story? It's the best story ever told. In the, in the Miracle Worker, Anne Bancroft plays Annie Sullivan, Helen Keller's teacher. And there's a scene where she says in her Irish brogue, I want to teach you, Helen. Oh, everything the earth is full of. Everything on it that's ours for a wink, and then it's gone. And what we are on it, the light we bring to it and leave behind in words. Why, you can see 5,000 years back in the light of words. Everything we think, feel, know, and share in words, so that not a soul is in darkness or done with, even in the grave. The wealth of words belongs to all of us equally as members of the human race. And we are engaged in preserving those words, organizing those words in our libraries. We review, we acquire, we catalog, we arrange and shelve and light and circulate the world's words for the benefit of everyone. Without words, the world is blank. We are Helen Keller before her teacher. We are alone, cut off. Without librarians, we cannot know ourselves. We have no memory, no essence. Everything we think, feel, know cannot be shared. We couldn't feed ourselves with stories, and we would die. And we humans are so lucky because we alone can read and write and save our words. Music, yes. Art, yes. But mostly, mostly we connect through stories. Today's financial report, the Battle of the Bulge, the proceedings of the Ophthalmic Nurses Association. <laughs> They're all stories, all words. Words like, ain't I a woman? And when in the course of human events, and it is a truth universally acknowledged, and Bileet Badus Adinoki by Lermontov, words, agape, shalom, and si se pueda, we are the keepers of the words, of the stories. And since stories are what truly keep us alive and human and in connection, and since human beings can write down stories, well, then there's nothing more important or more exciting than being a librarian. And that is the story the Hollywood librarian is going to tell.